Hi, I'm Zach, and today I'll be giving a presentation on Asimblox, a programming game inspired by WebAssembly. So, programming games came into prominence about a decade ago, and are loved for providing interesting programming challenges without all of the messiness of real-world programming. So I wanted to make a programming game, and I decided to base it off of TS100, uh, having a pretty, pretty basic UI, and it seemed pretty doable in Emacs. So TS100 is a programming game where you write a fictional assembly language into a grid of cells, which can each communicate with one another, and you're tasked with solving fairly simple CS101-like problems. So to mix things up a bit, I decided to base the language of Asimblox off of WebAssembly, uh, which is stack-based, as opposed to TS100, which is registered-based. So here you can see uh, the same program written in the, the, the game TS100, uh, what it looks like in Asimblox, and the original WebAssembly that it's based off of. So with that said, let's get into a demo. So this is the game board. It's a 4x3 grid. Uh, each cell has a stack of size 4. So first off, I'll show some of the stack editing commands. So we can add a value with the const function. So here we're adding two values to the stack. The two get added, and eventually the stack gets overflowed. We can fix that as follows with the clear command. So that clears the stack. We can duplicate values on the stack. So this duplicates the item at the bottom of the stack. So 10 gets put on, 20 gets put on, then 10 will get duplicated and put on the top of the stack. Uh, we could increment, for example, this increments the second to bottom, the second to bottom from the stack. So 10, 20, increment that, clear. So that's, that's basic stack operations. Next up, we have numeric commands. So, for example, here if we add add, it pops two values off the stack, adds them, and pushes the result on. So another way we can write this is as follows. So we can have the add here, and then nest the two, the two constants. And then this does the same thing. First, the inner, the inner const, constant operations run, and then the outer add operation runs. And we can nest, we can nest as deeply as you want. So there's also subtraction, multiplication, and whatnot. Uh, next up are Boolean operations. So zero counts as true. Anything else, or sorry, zero counts as false. Anything else is true. So for example, this would give us uh, false and true. So that result should be false. So. 0 gets put on the stack, 1 gets put on, and then the AND operation. So there's also OR, NOT, and various numerical comparison operations like greater than, less than. Uh, next up are the, uh, the port operations. So we can send values to other cells as follows. So here we're, we create a value and then send it right. So let's run this. So the const uh, 10 goes on the stack, and then it gets sent to the right. So here it's waiting for the this cell to pick it up. So it can pick it up just as follows. So left, and then why don't we have it drop that value after it gets it. So the 10 gets sent to the right, and this one picks it up and drops it. Um, lastly, we have control flow, which is a bit tricky. But with this, this visual helps explain it. So there are two block constructs, block and loop, and there's two jumping constructs, br and br if. So uh, if loop is jumped to, the control flow goes to the beginning, the, the top of the loop. If a block is jumped to, uh, it goes to the end of the block. And these various blocks are identified by their level of nestedness. So from the point of view of this, this jump statement, this BR statement, um, this is block level zero, this is one, and this is two. So here BR1 would be referring to this loop. So what this would do is it would, it would jump to this loop right here. If we were to do this, what this would do is this would jump past this 
this block right here. So as another example, um, we can this this right here. This is a a loop that generates uh, increasing numbers. So let's see. Next up, we have modules. Uh, this is an example of a of a stack module. In addition to stack, there's also heaps. Um, so what this does is it it allows us to create a an extra stack that we can push and pop items on onto. And this one can have a, a as large size as we as we need. So here it has a size of of twenty. It's taking values from the from up and and exposing those values on the left. So this this loop right here it generates numbers and it's putting them onto the stack and we can see here that those numbers are being exposed to this cell right here so it's just taking values and eventually it's going to overflow and cause an error so that finishes the the basic commands so why don't we try solving this puzzle so the puzzle description is right here so we want to read a value from i, send 1 to g if i is greater than 0, send 1 to e if it's equal to 0, send 1 to l if it's less than 0, and then all the other ones we send 0 to. So first things first, let's uh, send the value we get from the input down as follows. Let's send that value right, we get from up. Okay, so next we're getting a value on the left. Now we want to compare if it's if this number is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, we send one to G. So let's perform the greater than operation on that item we just got. And we're compa comparing it to zero. And now that result we're going to send down. And we're going to send this original value we got from here to the right. Um, here we do a similar step. We get the value from the left. But this time we have to do an equal operation. So is that number we got equal to zero? We send that result down and then send this number to the right. So lastly, um, we get this number from the left. Here we need to compare if it's less than zero. We send that result down. And now lastly, we drop that remaining value. Okay, let's, oh, and then lastly we need to send down the value we get up, send down, up, send down, up. Okay, so let's try running this. So, let's see, we notice that the numbers are coming in from i, they're going through our various conditions, and should be sending all the correct values. So... It looks like we're not getting any errors so far. So let's speed this up. And that completes the puzzle. So now let's get into some of the implementation details. So the first thing is the game loop. So the game loop is, so this is actually extremely simple. So all the state for the entire game is stored in just a few variables. So there's one variable storing the text, the text of each cell as like a, a vector of strings. Um, there's a single function that renders the entire game, the, the entire board. So there's a single function that would render this entire screen based off of the state. And then and then the game waits for you to press a key. The key usually, uh, depending on what action you perform, updates the state and causes a re-render. So it's an extremely simple game loop, but it makes implementing it pretty easy. So to demonstrate how this game loop works, I have a simple demo prepared. So this is a game of tic-tac-toe. So let me sh show this real fast. So it's an extremely simple implementation, but it follows the same principles that I used in ASM blocks. So first, so we have the state defined as we defined in variables. So here we have two pieces of state. We have 
which player's turn it is, and the state of the game board. So the player turn can be nil if it's empty, x, the string x or the string o. And then the game board is a list of nine board elements. So that's the state. And then we have a helper function. You can know the details, but it just returns true. Uh, if the board has a winning player. So part two is this is the rendering function. So only based off of the game state, we have a function that erases the buffer and draws draws this from scratch. Um, so that's this part right here. Lastly, we have the action. So we have one action, which is bound to return. Key, and it places a, a player token. So once it places a player token, it re-renders the board. And all the re-rendering is handled by is only handled by this function. And then we have just uh, creating of the mode and an initialization function. So with these three steps, uh, it clearly separates out all of the the state, the rendering, and the actions, and it makes implementing it very simple. So one trick that's used here, as in that I use in my Asmblox game, is that when I render the board, I I properize the text um, to contain extra information. Like for example, here, um, each cell has a tic-tac-toe index to indicate which which number cell it is. So this has index zero one, two, all the way up to eight. So that way, for placing, the only thing it has to do is just look at, look at its position based off of the, um, based off of the text property. So it makes implementation extremely simple. So next up we have the implementation of the code cells. So if you notice here, it's it's kind of weird how it's like a buffer, but each cell kind of acts like its own buffer, and it has its its own limits, and all of the Emacs editing, well, some of the Emacs editing commands kind of work, like beginning of line, end of line, end of buffer. Um, so how is that done? Well, it's all just a trick, actually. So each cell has text properties of which line it's at and its cell coordinates. And whenever a key is pressed for editing, moving lines, um, there's even kind of comp more complicated things like move, switching cells around. So, so all of that, it knows which position it's in. It's no, it knows what cell it's in. And then it copies the text of the cell because remember the cell, the the contents of the cell are stored in internal state. It copies that uh, cell contents into a temporary buffer. It then moves the point to whichever line it was in the game in the game board. It performs the action. It makes sure that the resulting text isn't longer than the cell width or or the cell height. And if everything checks out. It updates the state and calls a re-render. So there's nothing going on in here that's like actually inserting a letter A. Uh, it's all it's all updating the state and causing a re-render. So uh, it makes this makes things like certain uh, internal Emacs editing constructs um, pretty hard to use, like undoing. So normally the undoing construct, it's, it, it works off the content, contents of the buffer. But if your buffer is actually just like a reflection of the internal state, then how does undoing work? Well, it pretty much is kind of a hack. I mean, undoing is here, but it's, it's pretty much kind of redone in a not so configurable, not so modifiable way. And pretty much everything is like that from these parentheses highlighting. So normally, I mean, you parentheses highlighting would be kind of weird with like cross line parentheses and everything. So, so all of that had to be, had to be redone. Um, so another point about how this is implemented is the assembly to 
assembly text to executable ex code. So if you're familiar with if you're familiar with uh, WebAssembly, you might have encountered a tool uh, Wat to Wasm. So it basically uh, converts the WebAssembly text format to actually bytecode. And what I do here has it goes through a similar process. So normally when you're writing when you're writing this uh, this text format, you can nest things as deeply as you want. So basically what happens is it flattens out everything. So it kind of knows the order that all these things are going to be executed. Um, and then it puts it into one single line that it can just run through and execute. And the same thing for these loop, the loops and the uh, blocks. It, it internally generates lab labels and jump statements. So that concludes this presentation. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.